Girls screaming? Who are these girls? For the people of Sindh, this is a daily occurrence. These are Sindhi Hindu girls who are kidnapped from their parents, converted into Islam, and then married off to, you know, whoever can pay the price uh, for them. And later on, unfortunately, they are turned towards prostitution. This is the cry of sin. These are the daughters of sin. And uh, what we are doing to them is incomprehensible. And yet the cries are not heard, not in Pakistan, not in sin. This is not the only atrocity that is committed in sin by the authorities. Those who speak up for sin or the rights of the Sindhis are arrested, uh, detained, or what is popularly known as forcibly disappeared and those who seek their freedom are also uh, vanished uh, from the political scene. And while these atrocities are taking place in Sindhi, there's one gentleman who has decided to take on the task of educating the, the rest of the world or whatever he, whichever way he can. Sindh was a safe place for Hindus, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, Sikhs, Parsis, Sufis, Ahmadis, Baha'is and Christians. After becoming part of Pakistan in 1947, no one is safe. Mr. President, why is Pakistan's secret service ISI abducting thousands of Sindhis? United Nations must ask Pakistan, where are 17 years Akib Chandio, the artist Shahid Jonejo, the writer Gulshir Tagar, the innocent Insaf Dayo? Mr. President, the other critical issue is forced conversion. Forced marriages of Sindhi Hindu girls ages 11 to 28 years. Young Sindhi Hindu girls forcefully converted to Islam. More than 1,000 girls are abducted every year. Their daughters gone forever. Mr. President, another issue is extrajudicial killings. Thousands of Sindhis have been murdered by Pakistan ISI. Why they kill Bashir Qureshi, Nazir Abbasi, Benazir Bhutto, Buzafar Bhutto, Dr. Anwar Lagari? Mr. President, Sindhi people are asking, are asking for peace, justice and freedom. As an advocate of human rights, I requested the United Nations to appoint a special envoy to raise the Sindh question with Pakistan. I'm talking of Sufi Lagari who took 424 kilometer walk from Toronto to uh, the Canadian Parliament in Ottawa. Uh, he faced all the hurdles on the way. It was a long journey. I was dreaming about something which is meaningful and leave as a legacy of my whole work and uh, to also overcome my some inner fears and uh, some guilt and something to do which can count for the Sindh and Sindhi people that no one has done it before. One main purpose was my brother's was death, brutally killed in Sindh. And I felt that uh, I haven't done anything for him. And also I felt that there are many other comrades, which is uh, no justice for them. So I decided to do something a very unique and different things. So I reached the point Let's, I have to do, there's no shortcut, but a long walk. So I decided to do the long walk. And this idea came in my mind, is not just to do a one long walk, but as a movement and to motivate my people. And here we are supporting this uh, long walk of Sindhi Foundation. We are here in the downtown Toronto. This long walk is uh, 400 kilometer long and we'll be marching towards Ottawa. Uh, are, we are demanding that uh, Hindu girls are forcibly converted. Those should stop immediately. 
and they should be given protection as per country's constitution. The second thing that we are also uh, doing this walk for the water crisis in the Sindh and we are telling the Pakistani government that Sindhi need their due share for water. That's number two. And also we are looking for environmental justice for Sindhi people. Uh, actually this uh, long Sindh long walk is being organized by Sindhi Foundation. Munawar Lagari will be doing the walk and some of the other folks will be joining him from today, that is 28th of uh, May till 15th of June, where they'll present some uh, 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 memorandum to the uh, Ottawa uh, the government of uh, Canada. To achieve through this long walk, uh, especially in Canada, the uh, parliamentarian of the Canadian parliamentarian to make the friends, Canadian parliamentary friends of Sindh, number one. Number two, give the confidence in the Sindh, not just hope, but to give them confidence that they are not alone. There are people in, outside of the Sindh, they are struggling, they are fighting, they are bringing the awareness and consciousness, the an enlightenment in the Sindhi diaspora to get the unite, to unite them, that without the unity we cannot achieve our independence. And what is the independence? Freedom of the Sindh. That's our main object. Inspiration for joining this walk in Canada is actually started when the most of the Hindu girls was kidnapped and enforced and converted into uh, the, the other religions. So this long walk is uh, for freedom, nature and love, as our slogan says. Uh, this is all this long walk means we are raising awareness, we are raising uh, voice for missing persons in the Sindh, enforced disappearances, and also we are raising voice against the forced conversion of minor girls in Sindh, Pakistan. Uh, we are demanding from Pakistani government that uh, we need our legitimate right under the constitution. And bring the awareness and consciousness among the Sindhis and all other peoples in the world. So I came the idea of three important things, most important things, freedom, nature and love. The purpose of the trip which I came here to find my Sindh and I found it. And that's why I, even today, I mention and give the confidence to the, my people in the Sindh that we will achieve the Sindh. We will get back our Sindh, the real Sindh, original Sindh, the Sindh which the Sindhi people wants, the way to give them freedom, to give them uh, real love, to give them confidence, has been very inspiring uh, because we all because I found that we are all like-minded people we have same interest and uh, same uh, aim for sin so it was nice to hear every day from them the stories for uh, what they want to achieve and uh, you know uh, when they talk about uh, reference of other people, great people, and it was really inspiring every day to walk, and because we're not walking just for walk, we were walking for a class for sin. Uh, we have some focus, what in the problem in our sin, we all the oversee Sindhi, a very hard feeling because there's no missing persons over there and uh, no economical position. People's very poor, no eating, no water for drink, no water for agriculture. While uh, walking from Toronto to Ottawa, we, we got a lot of, uh, in some places we got heavy rainfall and how our spirit was high in that rainfall, like it was a Thunder is strong, but our leader, like Sufi Lagari, was asked, keep asking and chatting on us, Mira, Mira, how are you? Like, 
<laughs> he was continuously chatting the, like we are wake up or like we are not falling down kind of thing. We both were very tired actually because our clothes were very wet and our shoes they were fu full of water. Those kind of things and we saw like a lot of turtles and I was uh, trying to touch turtle and they, he was uh, like it was biting to me. So those kind of things we saw like a lot of snakes, few are alive and few are dead kind of thing. So like. Uh, these kind of things uh, we we observe through throughout our journey, and I was thinking in my mind uh, like uh, this is a very small struggle we are making for our people, but the other big struggle we have to make how we should be prepared for those kind of struggles for our people. Sufi Dagari's movement and his walk to Ottawa has at least done one thing, has brought to the attention of world leaders and parliamentarians about the troubles and the atrocities that are taking place in Sindh. Sindhi community in Canada is organizing their second long walk for freedom, nature and love. The event consists of a 424 kilometer walk to raise awareness about a number of important, important issues including ongoing human rights violations in the Sindh region. The Sindhi community in Pakistan regularly faces many human rights violations, including child abduction, forced marriage, forced religious conversion, and extrajudicial killing. In recognition of these violations occurring in the Sindh region and human rights violations occurring around the world, members of the Sindhi Foundation are organizing a long walk from May 28th to June 15th of this year. I would like to express my support for the Sindhi community and for their effort to address human rights violations through this march. I hope you join me in supporting the Sindhi community in their important walk. The Sindhi community has been especially targeted with enforced disappearances, often at the hands of elements of the Pakistani government. Many of these individuals have ended up dead, including my friend Anwar Lagari, who was killed in 2015 in Anwar's case, like so many others, the families have not received the justice they deserve. On July 7th of this year, uh, Akib uh, Chandio was abducted from his home in Karachi. I brought this case to the attention of the Pakistani Embassy here in Washington and the United States State Department. I stand in solidarity with the women who are striking in protest of the disappearance of their loved ones. We need information as to Akib's whereabouts and we must continue to push back against the persistent problem of enforced disappearances in Sindh. I'm Congressman Brad Sherman. For this reason, I am glad to stand with the Sindhi Foundation in their persistent call for an end to the disappearances of Sindhi people in their homeland. How many people have been forcibly disappeared? Thousands in the last decade. Who are they? Many fit into categories such as these. Activists, writers, teachers, artists, journalists, students. Anyone who speaks out against the government is a target for enforced disappearances. The list keeps growing and few cases are resolved. Every month, dozens of innocent Sindhis are taken from their homes leaving only a memory behind. Moreover, family members are threatened and beaten when they seek out information about their loved ones. Enforced disappearances are an offense against the rule of law and against every decent system of ethics or religion. Any government that practices enforced disappearances must be condemned in the court of world opinion. Such a government is not strong and just, but weak and disreputable. I rise today to condemn the brutal persecution of the Sindhi people in Pakistan, throughout the Sindhi province and especially in Karachi. Millions of Sindhi people are victimized by the Punjabi-dominated regime in Islamabad. This grave injustice and massive human rights crisis involves 
extrajudicial killings, forced disappearances, and tactics common in many totalitarian dictatorships. This oppression of the Cindy's is the work of the inter-service intelligence, that's the ISI of Pakistan, and the corrupt Pakistani army. More than 154 Cindy people have been reported missing just since August 2017, and among those two, uh, among those, and that included Dr. Anwar Lahagi, who is a physician who actually he led the Cindy people in the stalwarts in opposition to violent Islamic militarism, and that is why he was targeted by the ISI. Pakistan has made their choice to drop its alliance with the United States and join a new partnership with China and radical Islam, and they are now making war on their own people. The United States should stand with the people of Pakistan. Hello, I'm Congressman Adam Schiff, and I am so pleased to be able to offer a few words of encouragement and support for the long walk for freedom, nature, and love. I've had the honor of getting to know more about the Sindhi people and their peaceful and inclusive culture. I'm also deeply concerned to see the trends of human rights abuses in Sindh province, including disappearances, torture, forced conversions, and extrajudicial killings. I hope that the long walk can raise awareness of these crimes and bring peace and justice to Sindh. I am with you as well in your efforts to call for action on climate change and environmental justice. I wish you all the best on your journey and look forward to seeing my friends at the Cindy Foundation and all of you very soon. I'm, I've been corresponding with uh, leading human rights activists in the Cindy Pakistan, Sufi Lakhari. He's been providing me with uh, gruesome information about uh, abductions, uh, killings, uh, bodies found uh, thrown on the highways with uh, bullet wounds, uh, forced conversions to Islam, uh, forced marriages of uh, minority, underage minority girls living in Sindh and elsewhere in Pakistan. Uh, these uh, abuses are uh, uh, shocking and intolerable apparently are increasing. The message that's carried to the Sindhi community is uh, convert to Islam or leave the country. And unfortunately, many are compelled to uh, uh, respond just that way. Forced conversions, forced marriages, killings if they don't agree. Sindhi nationalists are uh, being freely killed or else just fleeing uh, uh, to neighboring India or somewhere else, leaving their country. And uh, these are issues that uh, the international community should take extremely seriously and should uh, insist in every way possible that uh, religious minorities be protected in Sindh and in fact in uh, all of Pakistan. 424 kilometers, that's how far Toronto is from Ottawa and Sufi Lekhari did this in 14 days. He walked, faced all the uh, troubles that you do face on a highway in a place like Canada. And I went to a very difficult road, very dangerous road. And I, I don't have the water. And I have uh, just walking and then one woman saw me that I was almost like uh, thirsty and my lips was very dry. So she gave me two bottles of water and I asked her, where the Buddha's uh, temple here near? She said, it's very far. I said, yes, but I'm going to walk. But he took this measure and to some degree he has brought attention to the plight of sin uh, in the eyes of the world. I really appreciate the Canadian peoples from the different uh, region like Karada, uh, Peterborough, Pickering, Whitby, Oshawa, and Meadow, they uh, give us a lot of love and uh, sometimes food and uh, tea, coffee, and free. they welcome us, and I really appreciate it. That's nice. We arrived in one campsite, and that campsite uh, was very wet. The slot they allowed us was very wet, and our RV like, settled down like uh, uh, on the tires, and I went to office and said, that, like, uh, this is not a good place, and uh, our RV is stuck. Right away, they asked me why you guys are here, and I explained it. 
their manager came and they they rescued us they took our rv out of that trouble and they gave us new spot and they said we are not going to charge you because you are on the good mission and they were very happy i think that's how canadians are and few places we were like uh, telling them when they say, saw our posters and they were asking us about sin and we were telling them we are walking from Toronto to Ottawa and this is our cause for the human rights. They, they were very free coffees, as free well. coffees yeah. and sometimes they have free yeah. water and they were really appreciating. The journey was difficult in a way because we never walked that long period of time. So this is first time we, uh, me particularly, I worked uh, walked first time 10 miles, 15 miles, and then it was difficult, our feet as well, you know. But uh, uh, because the environment was good, the people was very welcoming, the people were, we were so easy to tell people if people were, we were going to a restaurant or outside, if people see us and, and ask us the reason, and we tell them they were so welcoming. Daria, oh Daria, Pani te de dunge, Tu sa da piu ma, Ya sa te de punge, Tu sa da piu ma, Ya sa te de punge. Daria, oh Daria, dup te di tikdi. Daria, oh Daria, dup te di tikdi. Bedia vich lang gayi, umra di likdi, umra di likdi. Daria, oh Daria, Pani te de dunge, Tu sa da piu ma, Ya sa te de punge, Tu sa da piu ma, Ya sa te de punge. Daria, oh Daria, that's a deal that Johnny. I'm doing more than hope. I want to give them confidence. My hope is this: in the uh, parliament, we will going to create a friends, a Canadian parliamentary friends of the Sindhi. I am here to protest against injustice being committed in Sindh, Pakistan. So we are here to seek justice for the missing persons and for kidnapping and other stuff. That's why we are here before the President, Prime Minister's office. We are here today in Ottawa to raise the voice for climate change in Sindh and in forced disappearances and forced conversion. We are here to raise awareness. We are here to register our protest with the Canadian government and Prime Minister House of Canada. Uh, we want to deliver the letter to the, uh, of the Sindhi Foundation. We have an 11 o'clock appointment. You have an appointment to deliver the letter? Deliver the letter to the Prime Minister. It's about the uh, human rights violation and climate change in uh, Sindh province of Pakistan. They forcefully converted the Sindhi Hindu girls to the Islam and also the water issues and uh, environmental justice and uh, many other issues like uh, they enforce disappearances, they take our uh, the uh, friends and the cowards and then they disappear and not only they disappear but sometimes they do the extrajudicial killings. Many people have killed over there so we also mention all this in the letters and we are from the Sindhi Foundation and also my friends from the uh, Canadian Sindhi Association Kensa. 
So we already wrote it and we have said it in the media, it's an open letter. And I hope uh, Prime Minister Trudeau uh, uh, will be uh, give some reply and uh, answer will also share with the Pakistani authorities that this is happening in the same province of Pakistan. And I think this is the first time we are doing it and I'm sure that it, we will get the positive response from the Canadian government. So we are here to raise voice for Nothan Lal. Officer Nothan Lal is under false blasphemy charges. We are demanding from international community, please put pressure on Pakistani government to release this Nothan Lal, Officer Nothan Lal. Here in Canada, Ottawa, capital of Canada, High Commission for Pakistan, it's the first time ever in Canada, in front of the High Commission for Pakistan uh, against uh, Pakistani uh, uh, the, uh, the atrocities in Sindh province. We demand, one more time, we demand from the international community, please come forward and help us and make the Pakistani government understand that they are violating the ICCPR international law which is being violated by Pakistan. And that is the shame on Pakistan. Really, we are continue this our struggle until we get our justice and freedom and our uh, emancipation. We are just here on the right path that we are just came here to say that, you know, whatever the violation of the human rights and that stuff is, it should be stopped in Pakistan. So we are on the right path and hope that the state of Pakistan will understand and it will do something for those who are missing people, those who are being converted forcefully in uh, uh, Islam, or whatever uh, religious uh, or you know, uh, human rights violation, it should be stopped. We are here to register our uh, uh, pro protest against the uh, human rights being violated in sin and pakistan and we want to register in the parliament in the parliament house about it asan ite je ko aaye ayu in je force conversation je ko nyanin te ute je ko zulm tha thian nandin nyanin te to un je kare asan ite waq je lai aaye ayu a hi diso tha asan sab ite gad thia in je lai Well, I think it's great. I think it's important that uh, new Canadians like myself, because I, I wasn't born in Canada, I uh, emigrated here from uh, communist Poland, which doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it's just a footnote in history today. But things like this, it just it adds to the diversity of Canada. And I've always told people that um, shouldn't ever take away from Canada our traditions, our customs our national holidays, but adding new things to it, this is what makes this so great. So like a city foundation's long walk uh, for freedom, for nature and love, uh, it's incredibly important. And we're just adding on to diversity of Canada. It's one of our greater strengths that we get to hear from people from all over the world are adding to our diversity here, bringing issues that people may not know much about. Like people easily recognize country names, I think, but don't really recognize where those countries are and the fact that many of these countries in the world uh, have different ethnic groups are a part of them. So they are like, you know, confederations or federations, multi-ethnic, some of them are pluralistic societies, but many of them are not. And in the case of Pakistan, we know that not to be the case. We have a government in Pakistan that is known to violate the human rights of many of its citizens, forced disappearances, forced conversions from one religion to another, uh, pretty common. So things, this is how you get, uh, you sensitize the population in Canada to what's happening overseas. And you know, it's, uh, 
change doesn't happen overnight. Change doesn't happen just by big actions and incremental. Uh, bit by bit, people get better informed. They start caring more about the certain region of the world when things are going on. So that's why this is important because it, kind of, it puts it on the map. You start talking about issues that are of importance overseas. And uh, any, we know this, like Canadian citizens are interested in human rights violations overseas. We pride ourselves on speaking up about it. It's part of our foreign policy, regardless of the government in charge, liberal or conservative. Doesn't matter, it's a bipartisan effort. That's why this is important. Yes, it right. brings brings more people together and makes them sens sensitive to the fact that there are human rights violations ongoing all across the world in languages they may not speak or understand, but it's going on nevertheless. I just want to recognize the fact that, that when the state of Pakistan was created, it put together many ethnic groups that uh, didn't have a real history of collaborating together in uh, you know, a full liberal, uh, multi, uh, pluralistic democracy. So it hasn't really functioned very well. There have been, for decades now, extrajudicial killings of political activists, uh, leaders of uh, both ethnic communities, civic society, uh, religious groups, religious foundations, and it's been going on in the city of Sin and in the Sin province for many, many decades. Uh, I also want to recognize the forced conversions and the torture, so we know that there are forced conversions, especially of young girls, uh, Hindu girls who are being forcibly converted to uh, Islam in this case. Um, and for the most part, the Pakistani media covers it up or doesn't cover it appropriately. And the government, uh, uh, you know, although it, it strives to try and become a fully functional democracy, it hasn't really achieved that goal. And that the Pakistani military plays a huge role in the democratic movements and democratic parties uh, in Pakistan. And finally, the enforced disappearances, because that's something I get on a constant basis, both from Sins and from Muhajirs and from Baluchs, that are all being targeted at different times for, with these forced disappearances, professors, uh, people who are religious leaders, civic community leaders, political activists who are being kidnapped, they simply disappear for many months, are never found, or when they are found, there are obvious signs of torture and the Pakistani government has done very little uh, to hunt down and put on trial and convict the perpetrators of the crimes. And oftentimes people then uh, accuse, and there's lots of evidence to this, to this that uh, the Pakistani government is playing a role in these forced disappearances. So, uh, Sufi to all of those who are on the walk or a part of this uh, long walk for, or for uh, freedom, nature, and love, uh, I just, you know, I salute you, salute your efforts for doing this. Thank you very much for having me be a part of this. Okay. Thank you. I came from the UK to join this walk. I'm very privileged to finish this uh, walk with Sufi and Zulfkar and me. Muzaffar um, and other people. So our next step is to walk to another Sindhi walk from London to Paris or as a UK Parliament, UK Parliament to France, French Parliament. French Parliament. So we would like uh, many people to join us. Another step of our struggle uh, during the General Assembly uh, 77 session. I'm going to the Hungary's prime.